Hi, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I'm excited that you're here with me today to show you my foundation wear test of a new foundation to me. This is the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Foundation and this is the third day I've worn it and I'm going to show you the wear test that I did over the last couple of days and I really am liking these Pure products. I have used their eyebrow pencil and in fact I can't find it in all my makeup mess here and I'm really upset because I love their eyebrow pencil. I really like their eyeliners, especially their colored ones. There's one called Rain that is purple, and I really like that. However, I did feel like it didn't last all that long, which was disappointing. They also have some great eyeshadow palettes and some great blushes. I have really enjoyed most all the products I have tried from Pure, so I thought I would give this one a try. And the interesting thing about this foundation is, and I did not realize this until this morning until I really read the information on this foundation, but it is a concealer and or a foundation. And they actually have instructions for you to use it as a concealer. And to do that, you just put the tiniest little dots where you need some concealing. And I did do that this morning. I should have showed you that. And I put it also around here and here. And then it says to use a small brush to dab those areas in. And I found that it was a fabulous concealer. I was so surprised. And they also recommend that you use a brush when you apply this foundation. And you just need one to two pumps. And I would definitely say just one pump. The first morning I used this, three mornings ago, I used way too much and I created kind of an oil slick on my face. And that is something I will be showing you in the wear test is how it looked without any mattifying primer under it. And then also how it looked the next day, which was yesterday, where I did the full actually 14 hour wear test with it. And if you are an oily skin person at all, I would not use this without a primer because two days ago I used it and I was an oily mess by about three or four hours later. But when I used a primer yesterday, this wore all day long and stayed fairly matte and looked wonderful. Now, one other detail I would like to share about this is that this is the wrong color for me. This is a color called Almond and it was for medium skin tones. It was a golden kind of a foundation for medium skin tones and I really needed their nude, but they didn't have that to order, so I did order the almond. But what I did this morning, and I did not do this in the wear test that I conducted yesterday, which I'll be showing you later in the video, I put a little of this NYX Pro Foundation Mixer in with it, and this is the light version. They have a light and a darker one, and I've just had these in my makeup drawer for a year, and I've never really used them before, but it was such a delight to realize that I could lighten up this foundation using just one little squirt of this. You just squirt it in there and mix it all up. So if you have expensive foundations at home, or even not expensive foundations, but foundations that aren't your color, I've linked the information for this below the video, and I really liked it. And in fact, looking at my neck versus my face, I think I could use another little spritz of this white in there, and probably after the video, I will do that. Okay, first I'll say if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in all things for 50 plus beauties, then I hope you'll subscribe. And when you click that bell, it notifies you of my future videos. Okay, enough of my words. Let's get into the foundation wear test. I'm going to spray this brush with my Urban Decay setting spray. You should do about five sprays, but I did really like this foundation. However, oh crap, 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 crap. I forgot I wanted to put mattifying primer on. So let me take this off and we'll get started again. There we go, got it off. The reason I wanted to use a mattifying primer was because this foundation was very oily on me. I do have oily skin, so if you're dry, you might really like that. I'm going to be using this Dr. Brandt Pores No More. I'll just spread this all over my face, and hopefully we'll get some matte going, which will help that foundation. Okay, now we're nice and matte, and I'm going to go in with this Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie again. Nice little pump like that. I'm just going to really try to go a lot lighter than I did because this is super full coverage, which I, I do like that. I'm a medium to a full coverage girl. Used to be a totally full coverage girl, but then I got older and I don't like the, the fine lines and wrinkles looking worse. Okay, now where is my brush? Ah! Okay, there it is. I'm going to spray it again with my Urban Decay setting spray. I wish you could see my vanity here, or it's actually a desk. Uh, it is crazy covered with all kinds of makeup. In fact, I've been doing a no-buy for the last six days, and I think I'm going to continue doing that for a month because I don't need to buy any more makeup. I have a lot. I could probably do videos for three years with all the makeup I have here. So I'm just going to be 
buying less makeup. We'll see how that goes. Also, it helps because YouTube kind of exacerbates spending issues, and I've been spending too much money. So I'm going to kind of rein it in a little bit. And I am noticing my first six days of not buying makeup or skincare products that I am really enjoying what I have more. Because instead of just getting new all the time and dealing with something brand new, you can kind of use what you have and really appreciate that. Okay, here we go. There is that foundation. It smooths on beautifully. I might have even used too much there, even though that was not very much at all. I'm going to a party later today for my father-in-law's 85th birthday. And I may wear this. Okay, now as you can see, it's really very, very beautiful. Let me put a little on my eyelids here. I think that helps eyeshadow it here a little better. But there that is. It's very, very pretty, and it covers up everything on your face. I don't notice that it's settling into fine lines or wrinkles, and yesterday it gave me a very good finish all day long, but a little bit oily. So I'm going to powder it more to begin with, and we'll see how it looks throughout the day. Now I'm going to be going in with some concealer, and I've just discovered this One Drop Coverage Concealer from Catrice, and one of my great subscribers mentioned it, and I really do like it. Look at that little tiny, little tiny glass, not really a doe foot, little tiny glass dropper. Just put it in the areas where you need it. And I've been amazed by the coverage of this stuff, and I think it's like six bucks. Very reasonable. Just go in there and smooth that out. One thing about this foundation I did notice is that the only places that it wore off over the whole day were really my chin and around my nose here. I have these broken capillaries there. But every foundation I wear always wears off in that area. And usually powder covers it up enough that it doesn't look like it's worn off. Now to brighten the under eye area, I'm going in with a little Catrice Camouflage in this peach color. And it kind of nulls out darkness under your eyes. Look how it just brightens that area up. I'm using really very little. But it just gives the whole under eye area a little brighter look. And I don't notice that it settles into fine lines and wrinkles. And I'm going to finish that up with my favorite lately, which is the Essence Banana Powder. Here that is. It really sets the under eyes beautifully. And in fact, I, I use it kind of all over my face in any areas that I get oily. Because I think it does really offer a nice kind of matte, bright look. Very pretty. Now I'll quickly do my brows. And I'm using this NYX Tinted Brow Gel in Blonde. This is really not the point of this video. It's really the foundation, but I'll just show you what I'm doing. And I like this because as you can see, it just lightens up my brows just a little bit. And we blondes that have darker roots, which is probably most of the blondes out there. I know one natural blonde and she's gorgeous, but I can't imagine how nice that would be. But I am not a natural blonde. I used to be when I was a little kid. I was a totally white-headed blonde when I was born until all through grade school, and then my hair started turning darker. So there is that gel. Now I'll put a little Milani lid primer here. Make that really fast. And I'll set that again with a little bit of that banana brighten up powder. Because I think when you're applying powdered shadows, over a lid primer that is oily. It kind of helps your shadows blend better to cover the lid primer with a little bit of powder. Now, in terms of the eyeshadow that I'm going to apply, I've been using this for the past week and I ordered it from PR. It's the Kevin Aquan eyeshadow palette and I'm really loving this. It's rather dramatic looking. It has all of my normal brown shades that I love, but it also has this little extra shimmer which you put over the center of the lid and I'm really liking this. Okay, let's go in and we'll start with a little bit of a bronzy color right here on the lids. And I'll do this fast. I like sparkle on the lids. I think it just makes your eyelids look more prominent and it gives you a little bit of glow to your eyes. Very, very pretty. There you go. Now I'm going to go in with my Beauty Secrets crease brush, which I got at Sally's Beauty and I'm loving this thing. And we'll use this little light brown color as a transition. Just follow that down there. Other side. And brush more on the outside because you want it to 
going to be darker. Just drag that color in. Now here's the smaller version of that brush, and we'll just use a little bit of this darker brown color, a little intimidating, just on the outside here of the lid, maybe the outside third. Put a little bit of it up in that crease, just a little bit, about halfway in. Ooh, needs to be blended. These shadows go on beautifully. They last all day. Kevin Aquan is some of my favorite makeup, and I rarely get it because it's a little more high priced. Can't get up there. Seems like I always have problems having a little gap right there, so I'll fill that in. Now I'll go in with my Morphe E27 to blend that. I'm going to be using that sparkle liquid. And we're going to be using that sparkle liquid eyeshadow in the middle of the lid, which I'm really excited about. It's very pretty. Now let's go back in with the Sigma E30 pencil brush and we'll take a little bit of this lighter brown transition color and go underneath the lower lashes. Very pretty. Just brings the color together there. Makes the eye look a little more cohesive. Now let's go ahead and use a little of this fun sparkly shade, which looks like a gold, goldy bronze. So we're going to put it on my little finger there. And look at that pigment. Woo! I'm going to do this, rub it together, and just do a little dab there. The finger is often the best way to apply this little bit of glitter. Now let's go in with a little bit of a brow highlight here. This nice light shade, very pretty. Okay, the eyeshadow is done. Now I'm going to do my liner and mascara off camera. Okay, this is what I use to finish off my eyes. This is the L'Oreal Voluminous Brown Eyeliner Pencil. I use that in the waterline. Then for liner, I use the Revlon Color Stay in Brown. And for mascara, I use one of my favorite, more natural looking mascaras, although I put it on very heavily. This is the CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume. Love this. And then I use this great eyelash curler, which I've really been loving. This is the Surratt. I got it from Sephora, very highly rated. Absolutely curls your lashes beautifully. Now for blush, let's go in with this Milani palette. This is called the Milani Flowers of Love palette. And we'll just kind of go in between these two shades Dab a little on the apple and go up. Very pretty. It goes on nicely, but not too heavily. It's buildable, and I really prefer that in a blush. I don't like that clown look because I can really get that. Very, very pretty. Isn't blush wonderful? And I was reading this wonderful Kevin Aquan makeup book, and when he does blush, he puts it up here to bring in the rest of the face. Brings it down on the sides, which I like that, used almost like a bronzer on the side of your temples. Then he also puts it on the side of the neck, which I don't want to get down on my blouse, so I won't do that. Particularly, very pretty. Now I'll go in for some bronzer. And for that, I'll just go in with my Filmstar Bronze and Glow from Charlotte Tilbury. Absolutely love this bronzer palette. Very, very natural, and yet, Brings your cheekbones up nicely without looking like a chocolate bar is on your face. Little under the chin. Although I don't have a lot of real estate there because of this blouse. I think I will go ahead and darken up the temple area. Round that out just a little bit, a little bit in the middle. And my husband has not been liking highlighter too much lately but I'll put a little bit on the top of my cheekbones. A little bit in the middle. Now I'm going wild again. He said he didn't like it, but lately that seems to be something that makes me want to try something. Now, because fall is coming, I'm going to go in with a darker nude. Maybe this isn't even a nude. This is from MAC and it's called Bronx. Now that lipstick looks a little bit gray, so I'm going to brighten it up with this Milani Keep It Full Lip Gloss in the color Natural, or Natural Light, something like that. I love this. And it just brightens up any lipstick. Very, very versatile. There's that. 
Now I think that's a rather glamorous but kind of natural look due to the Kevin Aquan eyeshadow and that liquid bronzy eyeshadow that is in there. Absolutely love that. And I'm really liking this pure four-in-one love your selfie foundation so far, but I'll be checking in with you throughout the day to see how it wears. Okay, here it is just after application in my bathroom in kind of a yellowish uh, overhead light, but I think it looks very, very nice. Now I'll take you into my kitchen and show it to you in natural light. Okay, here it is in front of a bright kitchen window. I think it looks very, very pretty. It is nicely full coverage and still matte, which I do appreciate. And I have to admit that yesterday when I got out in the car without having used a mattifying primer, it looks pretty greasy. I came out to my car at 7.57 in the morning, just 10 minutes after uh, the last video. And really it does look rather oily and I did not powder it down. And the only powder I have with me is a compact, it's the Charlotte Tilbury Pressed Powder. And so I'll go ahead and use that and we'll see if we can make this look not like an oil slick. Go ahead and powder this with one hand and hold the cell phone with the other hand. Okay, that's looking a lot better. It's kind of scary how oily that looked. Okay, here I am out in the bright sun. I applied this makeup at eight o'clock this morning and this is again on the day of my test, not yesterday where I had the oil slick in my car. This is today, Saturday morning at 10. I've been editing on that video for the last couple of hours, but here is that foundation in the full sun, and I think it looks really pretty good. Okay, I'm in my kitchen, and it is noon, so I've been wearing this makeup for four hours. Really like it, haven't touched it at all. However, I did change my lipstick. I thought that MAC lipstick in the Bronx looked a little too gray and looked a little weird. So I've got this Milani Bold Matte in I Am Smart, love the name, <laughs> but I like the lipstick better and I definitely think this foundation still looks very, very nice. It really has not broken up around my nose, which it usually does. It hasn't broken up around my chin. I think it looks a little bit oilier, but not bad, just kind of a nice natural looking shine. I think that Dr. Brandt Matte Primer really made a difference in keeping the oil down on this foundation. So far, so good. I'm really liking it. Okay, it is about five o'clock. My husband and I are headed to my father-in-law's 85th birthday. I did change. I'm wearing jeans and a top, a tan top. The other looked a little wild and I wore it at another family event not too long ago and it was kind of memorable. So I decided to wear this. But anyway, here's the foundation and it really still looks so good. I did not put anything on my face at all, no powder, anything like that, no more blush, although I think I will add some blush for this party, but I did nothing to the foundation. It really still looks good, even around my nose and around my chin, which usually foundation does not stay on my chin. I really think with regard to this foundation that a mattifying primer was a really good thing for it because it did not get oily using the mattifying primer and it is still wearing like iron. Okay, it is 10 o'clock at night and I have not touched up this makeup all day. So that means it has been 12 hours on and I think it looks really very, very good. Of course, I really do need more concealer, but I didn't even put that on. My lipstick wore off hours ago. We had a really good time at Alan's dad's 89th birthday. I thought it was 85th, but it was 89th. He had a really great time. We had a good time. But anyway, that is how that makeup looks. I look really the worst for wear, uh, but the makeup still is going strong. It's a little bit separated around here, and obviously under here, we need more concealer. A little bit worn off on the chin, but I think all in all, it has worn well and looks pretty good. Okay, that was a look at the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie Foundation, and I really do love this. In fact, I'm very tempted to go out and buy it in my correct color, which for me is always nude, and I really love this Kevin Aquan eyeshadow palette too. You know, it's hard to get open though. Ah, I finally got it open. The thing I really like about this is, yes, it is the nude palette, which all of us have by now, but this transition color is wonderful. It's not too dark. These are two mattes. These are two shimmers, and this is a dark matte that you can use to kind of accent. I used all of these, but the thing I particularly like about this whole kit is that if you want to get into adding just a little bit more shimmer to your lid, I would highly recommend this because this is an easy way to do this. Even this little shimmery color did not get me the glimmer and gleam that this little liquid shimmer shadow did, and this was so easy. I love it that you just kind of put it on fingers and just kind of dab it on there. And Kevin Aquan also has this in more of a rose tone version, and I'm very tempted to get this.
Now, before I get into the thought for the day, in terms of what's coming up on my channel, I've got some procedures coming up that I'm going to be telling you about. One was a neck smoothing procedure, and I'm right in the middle of that, so I can't give you any results right now. And the next one was probably a series of three videos about how to get rid of unwanted veins. And for those of you who have followed my channel, you know that about 10 years ago before I came on YouTube, I had my hand veins injected, and I will link that video below. I am telling you, my hands look like they were 80, and now they look pretty darn good. But in my next vein videos, once I get through the healing of the vein process, I did go to see Dr. Fort in New York again. And again, I'm not sponsored, but I love Dr. Fort. He injected my facial veins that I had up here on my temples. He injected some arm veins, and I'm going through healing right now, so that looks a little brown, that looks a little brown. And he also injected some foot and leg veins, and my feet are really veiny. I'm just a veiny person, <laughs> maybe a vein person too, but that's another story. But if you're not a subscriber and you'd like to see those videos, just click that bell and you'll be notified of that and my future videos. Okay, I always like to leave you with a little thought for the day. And I've been choosing from these Miracles Now cards by Gabrielle Bernstein. So let's go ahead and choose a good card for today. Ooh, this is a very appropriate one. Sleep is a spiritual practice. Sleep is a spiritual practice. Oh my land, this is really interesting that this card came up today. It is about 10.30 in the morning here on a Sunday morning. And I meant to wake up at 5 and get this video filmed because I have other editing to be done and I wanted to get it out of the way so I still had some Sunday left. But amazingly, I have been practicing good sleep habits and this morning I woke up at 9 o'clock in the morning. 9 o'clock, that is unheard of for me. I am a person who all my life wakes up at 2.30, 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning, and if it's 4, I think, hey, let's get up, I can start my day, I come in, shoot YouTube videos, that kind of thing. So I'm not totally sure how excited I am to have slept till 9 this morning because I did not intend to, but basically what I've been doing is going to sleep at a more normal time, I don't look at my cell phone when I get up in the middle of the night so I don't see what time it is. And also I try to stop all caffeine after about one or two o'clock in the afternoon. So this is interesting that I pulled up this card. I'm not sure that sleep is exactly a spiritual practice, but I know it's a good and healthy one. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.